Uh, today's video, we will simulate the phenomenon of a laminar flow occurring through a circular pipe, which is being heated by convection occurring due to a constant temperature subjected to the walls of the pipe and, and validate it with analytical results. We will start from concepts which we have already discussed, like hydrodynamic entry length, and have brief discussion about what is meant by thermally developed flow and how it affects the concept of a fully developed flow and the meaning and significance of Prandtl number will be followed by a brief description of the governing differential equations and the necessary assumptions, which will help simplify the GDE. We will then look at the problem definition, which will include understanding the problem and interpreting the pipe parameters and the fluid properties, we will move on to the actual process of simulation, which will range from geometry construction and its discretization to the simulation setup. We will then conclude with post-processing of data so as to be able to check the simulated results against the theoretical results. Uh, for hydrodynamic entry length, refers to the laminar flow through pipe video in which we discuss the concept in detail. Similar to the, the concept of hydrodynamically developed flow, there's the concept of thermally developed flow. It is characterized by the flow occurring after the thermal entry length is passed by the fluid. The thermal entry length is approximately equal to the product of the diameter of the pipe. It's Reynolds number and Prandtl number of the fluid divided by 20. A thermally fully developed flow is identified when the non-dimensionalized temperature profile remains unchanged. In our case of convective heat transfer through pipe, flow will be referred to as fully developed only when both the hydrodynamic and thermal regions of the flow are fully developed, similar to hydrodynamically fully developed flow where there isn't change in the friction factor for a thermally developed flow, the heat transfer coefficient does not change, kind of assuming the fluid properties remain constant. The figure on the right shows the variation of heat transfer coefficient and the uh, friction factor along the length of the pipe. Prandtl number is defined as moment diffusivity to thermal diffusivity. Prandtl member greater than one, the thermal entry length is greater than the hydrodynamic entry length, while for liquids having Prandtl number less than one, the thermal length is less than the hydrodynamic entry length. And for Prandtl number equal to one, the thermal and hydrodynamic entry length are of same length. We will now have a brief discussion about the governing equations which describe the behavior of flow through a pipe. We have assumed the flow to be steady fully developed laminar and with its properties being constant. Additionally, the effect of gravity is neglected by conservation of energy equation and symbol rearranging. We can find out the exit temperature of the fluid. The figure on the right depicts the meaning of the equation, which indicate that the mean temperature of fluid increase in exponential which be indicated according to net transfer unit as NTU. The fully developed temperature profile is a function of both the radius and the length of the pipe. We know that the temperature profile at center has a maximum that is the derivative of the temperature at the center of pipe is zero. Additionally, due to constant wall temperature at maximum radius, the appropriate boundary condition is considered. The fully developed temperature profile is a function of both the radius and the length of the pipe. Uh, we know that the temperature profile at center of profile has a maximum that is the derivative of the temperature at the center of pipe is zero. Additionally, due to constant wall temperature at maximum radius, the appropriate boundary condition is considered. Um, um, both these, these boundary conditions are plugged into the governing differential equation after integrating twice, which provide the functions for the mean temperature, which is not shown in the slide. The following is the problem considered for the simulation along with its pipe dimensions and the fluid properties, which are assumed to remain constant throughout simulation. By using the Minchin formulae and relations, we can analytically find out the answers to the problem. Nusselt number is the measure of convection heat transfer to conductive heat transfer and written as HLK, where H is heat transfer coefficient, L is characteristic, length 
In our case, it is hydraulic diameter. K is thermal conductivity of fluid at bulk, mean temperature. For the case of constant wall temperature, uh, the value of Nusselt number converges to 3.66. From the Nusselt number, we calculate the heat transfer coefficient, the parameters valid for the flow described in the problem, which are to be validated against the simulated results. First, drag and drop fluent in the project, open design modeler, create cylinder and XY plane with given dimensions. Um, change solid to fluid. Close design model or an open mesh. Apply multi-zone method to the body and change sweep element size to five millimeters. Uh, add inflation layer with given parameters Uh, apply um, face sizing on both faces. Create the mesh by clicking Generate. Then give a name selection as shown inlet, outlet, and wall. Now open Fluent and click Double Precision. Choose Pressure-Based Solver and Time as Steady State. Choose Viscous Model as Laminar. Uh, in Fluid section, add Water Liquid from Fluent Database. And before editing the material properties, turn on Energy. Edit Material Properties. As per the given problem, uh, for this problem, we assumed fluid properties to be constant and evaluated at bulk mean temperature, but the uh, properties will vary with temperature, which also can modeled using appropriate function in properties. We will cover this in future tutorial. In cell zone conditions, change material from air to water liquid. In boundary conditions, edit inlet condition and give velocity and temperature. The default unit of temperature is uh, Kelvin influent. You can change any unit under units tab as shown for the temperature. Uh, similarly, apply temperature to the wall with no slip condition. Outlet condition is pressure outlet with default value. Method and control are set to default. In monitor change, residual to 10 raises to minus 6 for better convergence and results. Create report definition of exit temperature will also serve converge criteria. Initialize the solution with hybrid initialization. In run calculation, set number of iterations to max value and run until the solution converges. 
the post-processing is similar to laminar flow through pipe with other temperature, pressure, and friction factor measurements. Obtain the mean temperature by creating plane at different section and from surface report, calculate mass weighted temperature at different length. The important post-processing parameters is mean temperature plot, temperature profile at various sections of the pipe, velocity profile, and centerline velocity. Uh, the figure on the left represents the hydrodynamic velocity profile at the outlet in comparison with the theoretical velocity profile. The, the figure on the right represents hydrodynamic entry lengths with respect to the theoretical entry lengths. The following figures show variation of actual temperature profile and the non-dimensionalized temperature profile along the length of the pipe. Figure number eight shows that there is no change in non-dimensionalized temperature profile after the thermodynamic entry length, meaning the thermal profile is fully developed at 0.25 meters. This means that the flow is fully developed, meaning both the hydrodynamic and thermal profiles are developed after 0.25 meters. Figure number nine represents the variation of surface temperature and mean temperature along the length of the pipe. And we can observe that the mean temperature vary exponential fashion. Figure number 10 and 11 represents the variation of heat transfer coefficient and friction factor along the length of the pipe. And we can observe that both stop varying after entry length. The following table show the analytical and simulated results for different parameters and the error between them. Did you think about this, that how variation in properties will affect the exit temperature and how to calculate the same analytically? How will you tackle same situation when flow is not fully developed? For more information regarding the concepts and derivation of the governing differential equations, the following references can be used. That's all for today's video. If you have any doubts or suggestions, please do comment in the comment section. Watching and we'll meet.